His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Dhabi Palace. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on Bahrain's National Day celebration in commemoration of the establishment of Bahrain as a modern state and Arab and Islamic country in 1783 by Ahmed Al Fatih, as well as the anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. The cabinet also congratulated the people of Bahrain on this national occasion, noting that the kingdom also celebrates Bahraini citizens' accomplishments that further Bahrain's comprehensive development led by His Majesty the King. The cabinet expressed its thanks and appreciation to all the institutions and companies taking part in the Celebrate Bahrain events. Following the royal directives of His Majesty the King and on the occasion of the Kingdom's National Day celebrations, His Royal Highness directed that 6,800 housing services be distributed to citizens. His Royal Highness directed that ready housing units be distributed to beneficiaries starting from December 16th and assigned the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning to make the necessary preparations to begin the distribution. To mark Commemoration Day, the Cabinet paid tribute to the Kingdom's fallen servicemen, who made noble sacrifices for the security of Bahrain and its citizens. The Cabinet noted the outcomes of the 44th session of the GCC Supreme Council in which His Majesty the King led Bahrain's delegation and highlighted His Majesty the King's commitment to further GCC work to achieve its goals and consolidate GCC collaboration and integration. The Cabinet then commended the exceptional organization of the Ironman 70.3 Middle East Championship Bahrain held under the patronage of His Royal Highness and noted the outstanding efforts of the representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in furthering the Kingdom's sporting achievements. The Cabinet highlighted the outcomes of the Arab International Cyber Security Conference and Exhibition, which was held under His Royal Highness's patronage and inaugurated by the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa on behalf of His Royal Highness. The Cabinet emphasized the Kingdom's commitment to support, supporting and enhancing international efforts focused on raising cybersecurity awareness, protecting digital infrastructure, and confronting cybersecurity challenges. The Cabinet then approved the following. A memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee regarding a proposal to develop 500 government services within the government initiatives to support innovation and to form work teams across each government service agency to implement the initiatives to enhance quality and efficiency. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the third gen general increase in the capital of the Islamic co cooperation for the insurance of investment and export credit. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft decision to regulate joint financial services to improve oversight and performance. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding Bahrain joining the Counter Ransomware Initiative, which is a platform for member states to exchange data and information to proactively prepare for cyber threats and attacks. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU in the field of space science and technology between the National Space Science Agency and the National Space Science and Technology Center at the UAE. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum from the Minister of Cabinet Affairs regarding proposals for developing regulatory procedures for hosting events and exhibitions. In addition, the Cabinet noted the following ministerial reports. The outcomes of the participation in the meeting of the International Council for Dates and the International Dates Exhibition. The outcomes of the Manama Health Conference and Expo 2023 and the 15th Arab German Health Forum. The outcomes of the participation in the Ministerial Meeting on Urbanization and Climate Change at COP28. The participation in the events of COP28. And the outcomes of the 39th Ministerial Session of the Standing Committee for Economic and Commercial Cooperation of the Organization of the Islamic Cooperation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Speaker of the Council of Representatives Ahmed Lamsalam and the Chairman of the Shura Council Ali Salah at the Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of continued coordination and integration between the executive and legislative authorities to serve the Kingdom of Bahrain and its citizens, which contributes to achieving the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized that the complementary work between the authorities embodies the spirit of Team Bahrain, which reflects the advanced collaboration between both authorities and supports various work streams. His Royal Highness commended the efforts of the members of the legislative authority in advancing the legislative system, furthering cooperation with the executive authority and supporting various initiatives and development plans to achieve further accomplishments. 
He affirmed that work is ongoing to develop government services, facilitate procedures, and modernize mechanisms in all sectors through initiatives that ensure the highest quality and efficiency of services, highlighting that providing housing services to citizens is a priority. His Royal Highness commended Team Bahrain's role across various sectors, affirming that their efforts are a constant source of pride. For their part, Imam Salam and Al-Saleh expressed their gratitude for His Royal Highness's commitment to supporting cooperation between the two authorities, affirming the legislative authority's role in supporting efforts that achieve the kingdom's desired goals and aspirations for all. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa, the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al-Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al-Khalifa, and a number of senior officials attended the meeting. The National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, Lieutenant General, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Special Royal Force Commander, Colonel His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the Royal Guard Boxing Team participating in the Royal Rumble Championship organized by Bahrain Boxing Federation in cooperation with Bahrain Rugby Club. His Highness congratulated His Majesty the King on the Royal Guard Boxing Team's winning the championship's title after winning six fights out of nine against the British Army team, the Parachute Unit, making a sports achievement that reflects the high status of the Bahraini Boxing Team in light of the Royal support to the sports movement. His Highness congratulated the team members on the occasion, noting that their victory is a source of pride for the kingdom. He started that stated that the Bahraini sports achievement is a source of pride for Bahrain at the international level and that Bahrain's sports season reflects Bahrain's support for sports, events and athletes. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Bar Rashid Zayani, participated in the high level event organized by the UN on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Universal Declaration for Human Rights in Geneva. The Minister delivered a speech where he congratulated the Human Rights Council on the occasion and praised its efforts in supporting human dignity. He discussed the catastrophe witnessed in Gaza, where the rights of the Palestinian people are being violated. He called on the Council to take decisive measures towards these violations and confirming the principles of international humanitarian law and international human rights law and their application on all. The minister said that Bahrain pledges to develop a comprehensive national framework for human rights with a clear roadmap to implement its commitments and projects in the field of human rights and to work to promote the values of peace and tolerance through the legislative system and to launch an initiative to obtain a diploma in peaceful coexistence diplomacy with the aim of spreading a culture of peace, brotherhood and solidarity. He stressed that the Kingdom of Bahrain urges everyone to adhere to the principles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I should like to congratulate uh, the uh, meeting uh, on the event of the 75th uh, high-level event. Uh, in this uh, respect, I should like to draw the attention to, to a atrocious human tragedy where all uh, the Palestinian people are being subjected to atrocious breaches of their rights. Uh, and we believe that there is, should be an initiative taken by IHL and by international human rights law and its application to all people equally. We uh, call in Bahrain for a complete uh, adherence to human rights uh, and uh, to promote uh, the peace and security in the world and uh, to uh, push for uh, the peace of uh, the culture of peace and solidarity in, in the world. We call upon everybody to adhere to the universal UDHR. The Foreign Affairs Minister also met with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, Volker Turk, in Geneva. The meeting reviewed cooperation between the Ministry and the High Commissioner for Human Rights in the field of protecting human rights and freedoms to achieve common goals and the objectives of international human rights law. The two sides discussed Bahrain's efforts in promoting human rights and the programs implemented by all ministries and official bodies in light of the reform approach of His Majesty the King and the government's directives headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. 
The meeting highlighted Bahrain's continuous efforts to adopt constructive projects and initiatives that will preserve and pr protect human rights within the framework of its commitment to international conventions and laws related to the field of protecting human rights and freedoms and its keenness to implement a projects included in the National Human Rights Plan 2022-2026. They also discussed developments in the painful humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip and the international efforts to stop the war and the suffering of Palestinians and the delivery of humanitarian and relief aid in accordance with international humanitarian law to alleviate the suffering of innocent people. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Palestinian Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates, Dr. Riyad al-Malki. During the meeting, the deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and Palestine and the means to bolster cooperation in various fields were discussed. They also discussed the developments in Gaza and the efforts being exerted at the international level to stop the war and end the suffering of the Palestinian people, as well as deliver humanitarian relief aid. The two sides reviewed the outcomes of the efforts of the Arab Islamic Ministerial Committee following the joint Arab Islamic Extraordinary Summit to mobilize international efforts and call on the international community to immediately stop the war in Gaza, protect civilians, and provide humanitarian aid to civilians. The Kingdom of Bahrain signed an MOU with Korea to enhance cooperation in the environment protection and sustainable development field on the sidelines of COP28. The MOU was signed by the Minister of Oil and Environment and the Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana, and the Korean Minister of Environment, Dr. Han Wajin. The minister hailed the distinguished relations between Bahrain and Korea and the cooperation they witnessed in various fields, affirming that signing the MOU reflects the two countries' keenness on bolstering cooperation and accelerating the achievement of sustainable development goals. On the sidelines of the MOU signing, the Korean minister and the accompanying delegation visited Bahrain's pavilion at COP28 exhibition. An implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King and the order of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister on allocating 6,800 housing services for citizens. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, announced the beginning of executive steps of His Royal Highness's order and the development of a timeline to deliver the ready housing units to citizens beginning on the 16th of December until February next year, as well as disperse financing requests scheduled to be available until the end of 2024. The minister stated that the housing unit deliveries will include the units of the first stage in East Sitra Town and the new batch in Salman Town and East Head Town. She noted that the ministry will allocate a special budget to provide financing services for 2024. She held the order of His Royal Highness, which coincides with Bahrain's celebration of its national days. The minister affirmed that the order will contribute to providing immediate solutions for delivering suitable housing. After the success of the two-month trial period, the Bahrain Open Data Platform was launched after developing it in accordance with global best practices and United Nations standards for open data. More in this report. Towards greater progress and continuous development in the fields of technology, the Bahrain Open Data Platform was launched. The launch came in fulfillment of the aspirations of the government, and the Information and E-Government Authority is committed to fulfilling its national mission and ensuring that it keeps pace with the requirements of the current stage in an effort to support the process of development and prosperity in all major sectors in the kingdom. The updated platform is distinguished by providing the feature of data classification and searching through the web interface using the application programming interface and allows the ability to search, collect and filter relevant metadata in real time, provide the feature of previewing data in interactive mode, deal with geospatial data, and provide interactive maps for the kingdom. The most prominent objectives of the updated platform are to provide a base for open and integrated government data, enhance the level of transparency, encourage electronic participation, stimulate creativity, and publish government data to enable decision makers, investors, researchers, and citizens to view, use, and benefit from it. Its characteristics are providing available, updated, and comprehensive data without discrimination by the largest number providing government data free of charge to everyone, and providing the data in a readable format contributes to the process of development and innovation. The Ombudsman organized a seminar entitled Promoting Human Rights Respect, Responsibilities and Challenges, marking Human Rights Day, which falls on December 10th of each year. More on this report. 
On the occasion of a Human Rights Day, the Ombudsman Office organized a seminar entitled Promoting Human Rights Respect, Responsibilities and Challenges. The seminar witnessed the participation of officials concerned with human rights to present the process of human rights development in Bahrain. It highlighted the establishment of national agencies concerned with the promotion of human rights in addition to reviewing aspects of cooperation between these agencies and institutions within legal frameworks. The seminar discussed challenges facing human rights institutions, including how to gain public trust, spread a culture of respect for human rights, and an institution's relations with the civil society organizations.